Okay, we'll call the February 21st meeting of the Airport Commission to order. Roll call. Neil Johnson. Here. Greg Collier. Here. Andrew Barker. Joel Gardner. Steve Smith. Bill Schoonover. Greg Willoughby. Here. Okay, we don't have a quorum. That doesn't mean we're not going to go ahead and go through the discussion portion of the uh, meeting uh so we'll just proceed as we if we had a quorum other than we can't vote on anything does everybody understand that okay the minutes we can't approve because we don't have them next month anyway but we will open uh the floor for comments from the audience anyone have anything to discuss please do so now at this time Uh, okay, we'll move on to the next uh, Summit Aviation. We have an update from the manager. Good afternoon. Uh, so just updating a few things on how Summit is operating. Um, we are still having quite a few people come in every week asking about restaurants, so we still have the desire for a restaurant. It's very strong. Um, average is about three or four people a day that we're turning away. Um, um, our January fuel sales uh, over this time, January last year, are up 7% overall, and that's Jet A and Avgas included. Um, I think with the uh, more traffic that we're seeing over last year has resulted in us having more rental cars as well. We have a growing relationship with Hertz Enterprise. Um, yeah, Hertz and Enterprise, um, primarily with Hertz. Um, they, the relationship between Summit and them has grown to the point where they have given us a courtesy car to use. Um, so not only are we renting cars through them, they have provided kind of a thank you. Um, and so it's helped uh, relieve some, uh, or kind of fill a need whenever we have a lot of people in at one time, we've got more than one car. And uh, this relationship is still growing. I talked to them this morning and they're considering getting us a second courtesy car, which will be three in total for our location, um, which has been extremely beneficial. Uh, customers are happy. We don't have to tell anybody that, I'm sorry, if you'll wait a, an hour or two, it'll be back. Um, we just get them on out and that's, that's worked out very nicely. Having said that, they've provided us with a little bit extra signage because we're moving more cars. We've got more cars at the airport every day. Um, so actually just today, they got us a couple more signs. Um, we're filling that space. And um, uh, I think this morning we put out four or five cars just before noon um, with Hertz and Enterprise. Um, so that's going well. Uh, I wanted to address uh, a fuel leak that we have. Uh, Southern was supposed to take care of it when they did the reel at, um, that was leaking at the joint, uh, they came out. Um, my guys are, and I've seen it as well, have told me that we still have a leak at an isolation valve at the fuel farm. It's just a drip here and there, but from what they tell me, it is, like, it is getting a little bit worse. So I wanted to kind of bring that up. And I didn't know if Southern had just overlooked it, but I knew they were supposed to address it the last time they were out, and it hasn't been. So we're just kind of keeping an eye on that, making sure it's clean and mopped up. But that is all I have, unless you have any questions for me. I have a question. Yes, for sir. You. Courtesy car, can you expand on that a little bit? Does that just mean that they're leaving a car here extra to be able to rent? Yes. So FBOs tend to have a car that they own uh, or rent um, that they can give out to a customer, primarily the pilots that fly in. So their customers might have a rental car, but the pilots are stuck at the airport unless they get their own rental car or call an Uber. Um, so we have a Dodge Durango that we have been lending out to pilots for an allotted period of time. Let's them go get a bite to eat or something like that. But we usually have so many pilots coming in uh, around the same time that that one car, if they don't carpool, um, then they're kind of stuck at the airport and not having a restaurant, they're wanting to get out. Um, having this extra courtesy car provided by Hertz has allowed us to um, uh, let other pilots have this car, they can go to a different place for lunch um, or go to a meeting across town that's half an hour long and, they, and they'll be right back. They don't have to 
spend the money on a rental car for half an hour. Um, and we just, the only thing we ask of them is that they buy fuel or fill up the tank on the courtesy car and then we're usually happy. And so because our sales have been doing so well, like I said, looking at getting another car, which is gonna alleviate the, the now very rare occasion that we don't have the availability to give somebody a car. So does Summit's insurance extend to them driving that? So our Durango is owned by us and insured by us for them to use in that purpose as a courtesy car. And Hertz insures their cars for that use as a courtesy car to us. The requirement on our, on our end is to fill out. Um, I've, I've developed a uh, some paperwork that just states what insurance the individual driving the car has and a valid driver's license. We keep that on file while they uh, are using the car. And if anything happens, their personal insurance will cover it. But Enterprise also has, or I'm sorry, Hertz also has insurance for their car. Anything else? A few you. more, a few more summit things. Um, I figured Adam would be here, but for Garver, but I don't see him. Um, so we we paid um, Garver Engineering and some people that work for Adam to develop a spill prevention countermeasure plan for us as an FBO here. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, and, and James, I'll end up sending you an electronic copy so you have one for your file for the city, but. Uh, Basically, they've come out and they audit the entire facility and our operations and how we handle fuel and, and where the potential leaks are and where the potential catastrophic events could occur. You know, if a tank ruptures, what is the prevention for that? What is secondary containment? Uh, where might those go? Who do you notify? Um, so they completed all that study and have worked the report. We had a, three or four items. They said, would you take care of these things? And we did, such as you may have noticed the uh, uh, 100 low lead diesel two tanks that we have that are above ground to fill up our fuel trucks. Um, those now have secondary containment uh, underneath the stands that they sit on. So that was an add on at their request when they identified what we're doing with fuels and oils and so forth in our operation. Um, so anyway, this becomes a legal document. They file it with, I believe, the uh, uh, with the federal agencies and uh, we'll give you a copy. But one of the other areas I would add is that it also has a lot of training in that. So uh, Daniel is looking over the requirements of what we cover annually and what we've done with Shell and Eastern. And if it's not already covered, we'll be adding to our training program for our employees so they're ready in the spill prevention kits that are in the trucks and so forth they know how to use. <laughs> Most of that they get with annual training now, we feel pretty comfortable. There are some other requirements uh, as a result of the spill prevention plan here that uh, it requires us to do and be good with. So that'll be happening. I just wanted to make you aware of that. It's an official document that, that we have, but I'll get you all a copy so you also have it as a city. Uh, the, other, the other topic I wanted to cover and update you on uh, in, involves an opportunity to grow more flight training within uh, Springdale. And I think you're all aware I retired from everything that's occurring in Bentonville in that operation. And their focus has, over the last year, has been more and more around Bentonville. And even though they've had uh, the highest number, I think, was four flight instructors, they've been down to two and one here with a couple of planes. Uh, so as, as I left and I continue working and understand what they're doing in Bentonville, uh, their focus was Bentonville, and they're more specific about it. And so we met with Cameron with... Uh, uh, fly ARH with the helicopters and they also do flight training to see if he would be a uh, open to the idea of expanding his operations uh, and taking more of our walk-ins and our customers that want to learn more about flight training expand the fleet of what could be rented as well as uh, taught in so if you don't mind I'll ask Cameron to come up and explain where he's headed and what he has graciously accepted and continued to uh, take that banner and grow with it Thank you, Dave. Um, my name's Cameron. I am the owner of ARH Aviation, formerly Arkansas Helicopters. We kind of renamed our uh, company uh, last year. One of the reasons we renamed our company was due to the fact that we started conducting more operations around fixed wing operations. We have several contracts with the state of Arkansas, state of Oklahoma. We currently have two fixed wing aircraft. We have a Cessna 172 and a 182, and we're aggressively trying to acquire another 172. Hence, the whole conversation between Bentonville and Springdale about who could really take over the flight training if 
the flight training was to move back, the summit flight training was to move back to Bentonville. So currently today, we are a 141 operator. I do not have the fixed wing underneath any 141 at this point in time. Um, there's been talks about that. Um, don't know where that's all gonna land yet. But I can tell you this, Springdale is my home. I live here. I work for Tyson Foods. I work here in this community. And the Springdale Municipal Airport has been my home for the last 10 years for our business. And we are aggressively growing our business a lot. Um, not only on the helicopter side, but on the fixed wing side as well. Just in the small two years that we've operated the fixed wing stuff, we flew just last year almost 600 hours on the fixed wing. Partly flight training, some commercial work, helicopters, we flew over, over almost 800 hours last year. So we are putting staff and plans in place so that we can grow that operation and really focus on Springdale and provide good professional quality flight training for people that want to make a career of this. Um, that's my focus, that's my energy, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. That's just kind of a very high level. Dave and I still have a lot of details to work out when it comes to facilities, um, other things like that, but um, we're right in the middle of um, uh, kind of the transition, so to speak. So the plan at this point in time is um, Summit Flight School will move to Bentonville as of April 1st. And they will not be in Springdale anymore. They will move their equipment. Um, they do have 10 students here at this time, one instructor. And um, that instructor will be employed by us come April 1st and the remaining students that they, that they don't finish up by April 1st, we will acquire those as well um, and take on that. So that's probably gonna leave us somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 to 25 fixed wing students, and we have roughly 15 helicopter students right now flying. So that's really all I can kind of give you right now. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I'll add just a couple of things. Uh, over the last three months, uh, Summit has been about 15 to 20 students here and two CFIs. Uh, a couple of those went on to airlines and uh, uh, Zach, who's flying jets now, who built a hangar at Springdale, was one of our CFIs. So that brought the group down to two. Um, they met with those instruct the, met with the students out of Springdale and there were a few that agreed to move to, Spring move to Bentonville. Uh, to finish up their ratings and then the one CFI is finishing up there's 10 10 to 11 and uh, they they agreed to a hard date at the, as of this time these other students won't be completing their certification yet so that CFI will move over with those students uh, with some continuity and so Cameron and I have talked also about uh, uh, hangar situations and trying to give him a little more growth uh, what I and we're taking all walk-ins that come in uh, here for the last three weeks as they come in and directing those to Cameron because uh, the Bentonville Summit won't be taking any new students on. They're trying to complete those that they already have people in their programs with. Um, and so I think personally it's a, it allows a lot more focus here at Springdale uh, where it's been a difficult, you know, personally I can say this over the last three or four years, it's been hard to run the same operation at both locations from the standpoint of flight school specifically and we've had uh, uh, a scattering of, of no support and then some partial support if you knew Sarah. She was doing three days a week trying to help coordinate students here. Uh, and so I think it's a better move long term to gain more flight school students and uh, on both sides, both helicopter as well as uh, fixed wing to accommodate that and potentially improve the market of what's out there as a student to either rent or, uh, or learn it. We had uh, 172s and 152s, and now you'll have 182s and 172s. So, yeah. So, the other thing I'd add to that as well is, you know, our efforts in flight training have always continued to grow, and we've partnered with Harbor High School as well on a flight club that they're trying to establish in a, a curriculum inside the high schools. Um, there's a gentleman named Jason that's working on that. Yeah, I love him to death. He's got so much energy and so much positive energy about establishing a flight program with inside the high school here in Springdale. And so we have 
help them get through some of the process. We've also monetarily helped them as well. And um, if that goes really well, it could go into Springdale High, it could go into Fayetteville, it could go into any other high school in this region as well. Um, so we're, we're definitely looking to expand in all kinds of different avenues. And we, we want to grow a very good solid base right here in Springdale. Yeah, I would, I would add, we met with Jason also, and, and yep. so at Springdale, we're looking to partner with him also. And it's not just a curriculum, it's an AOPA curriculum yep. that uh, has been certified across, gosh, I think they've got about 50 high schools using it now. It's a one-year program that'll expand. They're working on the second year now, and I would see in three or four years that may be a four-year kind of curriculum that uh, Jason's great. And if we can get the AOPA program in, it'll further help everything we're trying to do at the airport. Yep, so, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good partnership. So anyway, any questions on that? Uh, I know I've, I talked to Wyman uh, uh, and Greg earlier on it, but uh, so we're promoting and uh, Cameron's brought in some banners and everywhere we can work together in our front office to understand what their skill set is and how to direct people and, and just continue on. I have not got a question, just a comment. It's uh, obvious that one of the most important things we have is a good flight school at the airport. Increases our activities report or self fuel and generates enthusiasm about air. And we've always had that at the Springfield Airport. It's always been a great place to learn flight. Geographically and everything has lended itself to that, I guess, as well as you know. And uh, except for the the approach ends of that yeah. runway. Yeah. But no, I, I'm proud to see that someone's stepping in and picking up the the vacuum that would be left if Summit uh, pulled flight school out. So uh, anything we can do, just feel free to come in and talk to us about it. I know we're we still have room to build hangars. We have uh, land out there that we're giving land lease for anyone who might want to build a hangar. You may want to consider that. Uh, so I think it's a great deal. Yeah. I'm glad to see you working on it. Yeah, I'll add one other thing. Cameron is, uh, actually has a, a great training facility in that hangar if you've not been over and seen it. They've done a lot of great renovations to it. Uh, but we have talked about uh, the opportunity where he would have presence within the FBO. To, mm -hmm. That's always been a weakness of people that walk in on a given day and there's really no one if they're out flying, it just it's it's tough if there's not somebody knowledgeable there, and uh, be over on the north side, that lower counter that uh, the current flight school has been using is probably going to transition over. Uh, it may also lead to the opportunity for Summit in Springdale to improve the uh, conference room and what's been used for flight training, and also some pilot lounge and or theater room or something that might also help transient pilots. So working together, we may try and grow a little bit of both the amenities of flight training as well as uh, what the facility can offer to pilots that come and go. So we'll work together. Absolutely. And, and I'll uh, send this electronically to James. And James, if you far out that, uh, yes. I, need to, I need to sign it originally and then scan it all back into PDFs and shoot it to you. There's the spots we have to sign to authorize it. So as soon as I got all that back as a PDF, I'll send it to you, and then y'all can have your official copy too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do now have a quorum. This well, I got one tiny town and two Springdale policemen following me, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. He didn't offer to pay your tickets. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's good news. Uh, okay. Uh, any. Operation report, James. Everything's going good. We uh, went up and repainted the tower cabin. Everything got that looking good from Mike. Put new carpet down. It was getting pretty old. And uh, as far as our hangar rent, I've got Bill doing the calling and collecting on those. So anybody that goes over 30 days, they get sent to Sarah. So we'll let Sarah report on hers while she's here. 
Attorneys love to talk about how brief they're going to be, and they never are, but I will attempt to be brief today. So um, the reason I had asked to be put on the agenda this meeting was for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to confirm whether or not um, our settlement with the Howard Hangers went through, and number two, I was planning on filing another eviction action. So the Howard Hangers, that lawsuit is settled. We've received payments, so we are done with that. Um, I began, I initiated eviction proceedings on the hangers rented out by Bill Keithley, but as soon as I initiated that, we received payment in full on all back rents and the next month's rent. So that issue is resolved at this time. And so I received um, the notices for people who were overdue on rent from Sarah Manweiler in the city clerk's office either today or yesterday, and I'll get rolling on those. That's all I have for you. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I was just curious about John Gerhardt. He seems to be most delinquent on our sheet here. And I know he left. He's now over in and I'm, I, I am initiating collecting rent for the people who are already out of the property. So it won't be, it won't be an eviction action. It's something that I can file in the district court here. Okay. I was just curious about no. that. Any other questions? All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Activity report, Wyman. Got our financial statements for January in there, and we'll, we received enough grant money that we're back in a positive position on cash. I did update uh, the records on the CIP money that the city's got and remember they we had money left over from the airport terminal and they told us we could spend it on whatever improvements we chose to what and the balance is still in there is twenty four thousand and some odd dollars. We've got twenty four thousand there. Twenty four thousand two hundred thirty six dollars, right? Yep. And uh, thirty six cents uh, just ask the city attorney to go ahead and file possession order on that last third house that we haven't got. So okay, I was going to ask you to go ahead and with the land acquisition that day. So so he's going he'll be filing a possession order. So we should get possession of it pretty soon. Then I'll get an asbestos survey done to follow through. Um, we will be facing demolition and everything else on on those. So. Uh, that's good to know. As soon as we get that started and cleaned up, better off we'll be. I can say this. I think our timing couldn't have been better. And I know it's baby steps, and I know it is uh, we haven't gotten all the properties that we wanted. We haven't, uh, we think we have enough, and hopefully there'll be some more come available to do what we would like and it fits right in with what Dave was talking about there a better uh, place for transient pilots and uh, that sort of thing where they can we can have a great front door to the city through the air traffic so uh, it's all it, it's everything seems to be falling in place and it's part I've had a lot of people talk about uh, the idea that there's a lot of great things happening in downtown Springdale and this would just be a, another part of it and so we're getting some good positive comments about it at least I am I don't know how everybody else is but how I expect them but hopefully we can make it happen and we've got to start and Wyman's been very helpful on this and hope to continue to get the properties in our possession and cleaned up Remember, several months ago, we had a presentation on drainage for Spring Creek and the possibility of retention, holding the water back to take part of the property downtown out of the floodplain. They've determined that that's a worthwhile project, and the city council has hired an engineer to go ahead and design the retention facility that would be on airport property. Right. It won't hold. They had a couple of locations. Or they're looking more on the east side of the runway, aren't they? It'll be on the west side. On the west side. Uh, but it'll, it'll stop before it gets to the place where we would have a 
taxiway to go across to a new terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be interesting to see the plan and see what they're proposing. Large area of that over there, though, fairly shallow. Right. So that'll be interesting to see that. And they're working on that right now, I guess. But well, they've approved us hiring the engineer to, to do the design. Okay, yeah, we, if you remember, we saw the preliminary proposal for that, and uh, at the time we weren't too keen about it being on the airport property. They proposed, I thought, on both sides. So. But they looked at uh, several different options, and they did look at putting one on the east side, but they determined if they do the one on the west side, it by itself will be enough to solve the problem. We just have to see the plan, and then we can critique it then, I guess. See how we think it affects us, either positively or negatively. So on the demolition of the houses, is that, does that fall on us? Oh, yeah. It's part of the cost of the land. So are those, those are all wood structures, aren't they? They are. Hopefully we can get the fire department to participate in it. If there's, any, if there's not any asbestos in them, it'll be a lot cheaper. But if there is, it could run the price up. But we, I'll get a survey done of them to see if there is any asbestos. And if there is, I'll get an estimate to, of the cost to remove it, if it has to be removed. Yes. Hopefully that will work out. Any more questions on the land acquisition? We skipped over a discussion on the airport restaurant. There's a lot of talk about that. Uh, we are in need of that. We talked about it at the last commission meeting, and we have a committee out there. Yeah, Andrew's not here. And, and Andrew's uh, not here. One, but there's been some things that have come up since our last meeting, and I think we have a is Bill Bush here today? Yes. Uh, if you don't mind, come up to the. Uh, he's Bill has made a proposal to look at putting in a restaurant there with his own equipment. And I know uh, I made sure call Rose about this very thing this week, uh, and we did not uh, make a motion toward doing it doing the equipment it was we were still in an exploratory investigative manner so we wouldn't have to undo anything uh, in other words we had people that were only interested if we provide equipment so I thought it was kind of necessary that <laughs> make sure that we did not assure someone we were doing it other than just an exploratory does that make sense so I think we're, we're okay to you know, to perceive whatever, either way. So I'll turn it over to Bill at this point and let him tell you what he's proposing. And then we do know, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's been made aware of it, that in the past, we've only just leased that space. And the people who were leasing it had could do what they wanted to with it as far as the restaurant and things of that nature. We didn't specify any time they'd be open, any menus or anything like that. And I know you've provided that information. But I think it's been the consensus of the commission that we do take it one step further. And with the lease agreement, we at least want to know the errors. We would, we want them met. If there's a change in hours, then it must come back before the commission for their review and, and permission. And that, you, under, you understand. I understand what you're saying. Yes, to, sir. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> With that uh, being said, uh, I'd like to hear your proposal. All right. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity, especially to James. It's good to meet him. First time I met him. We've talked off and on for a couple of years in Wyoming I've met. But I uh, do think that there's a, a lot of potential there. I've got some notes here to try to keep me on track. We're all our airport fans. You know, we want to see this restaurant succeed. And uh, I've got some friends that I work with, uh, Don Kephart, 
who rents from you all out there and has an airplane. And uh, Mark Draper, those guys are helping with the Scout Aviation Explorer Post that I'm excited about, which is for kids 14 to 19 to learn to fly, which kind of goes along with some of what you're working with there, which might be a connection we need to make. But obviously the big uh, unknown here is how long it would take to recover this uh, patron base that we've had for years. You know, um, James and I talked, and again, to your comment, the uh, idea of consistency in hours. I don't know how many times I've been in there personally. I'm an airport bum, and you, somebody walks in, is the restaurant open? No, it's not open. No, it's not open. And Daniel knows he's heard it more than I have. It's just not good. So uh, that has been the downfall of recent operators. Fred, the guy that was there for years, you could count on him. He was like a rock, good food, and he was always there. So <clears throat> my, my background is uh, farming, and so the simpler, the better, because people want to make everything complicated. And they, if somebody starts that, and I just, I know that's not right. So the simple, the smart approach is what I'm thinking about doing. Regular hours, and then uh, maybe only breakfast and lunch, which is what Fred did. But something that's consistent is the key thing. So the, uh, the main two thoughts I had again are the, the menus being very simple, then there's no equipment, and uh, just basic simple equipment. Nobody wants to uh, overspend and <laughs> to go broke waiting for a patron base to appear. So. As the business grows, and it will support a larger uh, variety of menus and more equipment, then I could add in some more equipment and so forth. Possibly even the barbecue equipment uh, James and I were talking about, there's a place for that. So it takes time to gather all this stuff up, equipment and supplies and employees and so forth. So an exact timetable on my part, I mean, should I even be given the offer? I, I don't know, but I would make a rough a guess that uh, officially I could probably be open, say, around April 15th. And in the interim, I would probably try to cook some stuff and not be officially open, but anybody that came by and wanted to buy some food, I could, could uh, begin working with it. Uh, again, the, uh, the 400 a month rent is very reasonable uh, with the bills paid. Uh, you know, nobody should or could complain about that. But uh, I don't know, I, I, again, I'm an airport bum and I just have uh, a lot of uh, uh, fun at airports and I think, wouldn't it be great if at your little airport, not just once in a while, but say every Saturday or at least one Saturday a month, you had a fly-in and it brings people in, hang out like Carroll County. They have, I guess if the weather's good, once a month they'll have one and that could be just a lot of fun. With this scout group thing, this post 142, uh, which I'll tell you where I got that number, 142. Does anybody know about the 142nd Field Artillery National Guard group here? Who knows anything about that place? I know. Okay. Well, back in the day, my dad was a group commander of that outfit, and so that's where I got that number, 142. So I also have heard some rumors, it doesn't sound like that from what I've heard that there's any possibility of that, but that Summit was going to build another building or something on the north end of the runway. Nothing? Okay. I thought, well, if they did that and put in a restaurant, that'd kill me, you know. So with the conversation I had with James, he said basically as long as, you know, we didn't rock the boat, that uh, this could be a very long-term relationship. And I do mean long-term because I am an airport bum. Uh, it's love. Oh, that's the city's possibility of building. What would they do then if they had a new FBO? That's a long way down the road, and we have, that's the least of our worry right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, uh, my, only worry, as I read through the, uh, the contract offering here, is this changing the lease and the right to, to alter it 
that makes me very nervous. Nothing personal, but I've had at least two poultry contracts where one of them, the guy came in and said, well, the boss went to Las Vegas and he lost a little money. And so you're going to have to take a 45% cut. And if you don't, we just won't bring you no chickens. Oh. And so that, that scares me. It's almost a deal breaker to me and so forth. So uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer. I do. Uh, staff, do you have in mind people who you will staff this with, cooks and, and I'm waiters? looking. I have got some people that I have talked to and reached out to and uh, uh, until I knew I could actually even offer them a Man. job. Why? But uh, I, have, I have not. Basically, the answer would be no, I don't have any staff. I'm going to have to find them. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's going to take me a, a little time to do that. Between getting some equipment in there and finding some people, I don't want to hire somebody that just says they're a cook. You know, I'd like to find some people that have a background and some experience in the restaurant business. And James gave me the name of one lady who was interested in working there uh, as a waitress and so forth. But uh, the answer is no. What, what were you referring to as the terms of the lease that you were needing to change or be well i'm not sure real clear about this paragraph six that looked to me like a an open invitation you guys all look nice you look like great guys i believe we could get along but if the next brunch you come through and for some reason they got sideways with me then i could be kicked out the door this i don't see this as a uh big money maker it's just uh, going to be a labor of love you know what i mean and so i think that's a just a paragraph that has to be in there it's not something we've ever exercised to anything that would be a hindrance or a business killer if that's what you, you would think it's obvious that we are correct me if i'm wrong but we're leasing that for even less than what the utilities are for that space or not anymore we're not making a dime on it we're we're looking at the restaurant to be a place that yeah we would need to recover some utilities on it but we would like to have it if someone comes into the airport and they want a hamburger or something they have it refreshments or yes uh, a simple meal we don't think and we've talked about this before that this is a place that you you go out at night and have a nice sit down wine and dine restaurant we, we we never envisioned that we know there's some people that have in the past but uh, uh this is simply i think what we had it was successful at the airport at one time where you could have hamburger fries and drink and everything to be on your way and i think through the years that i've flown to airports that's about what i wanted when i got there or i'd get a courtesy car and i'd go downtown and have me a steak or something like that so uh, just the fact that uh, no one can look in the future and tell what what will happen or just how it'd be structured. But uh, for me, I know for for me it looks it looks very like something that I've envisioned that should be a start for the restaurant at Springfield Airport, but with the potential of growth. And you mentioned that, and uh, I'm sure if you had success with it, if you had it, you'd move on. That's basically all I had to say, but I'd welcome so, The only thing that I would say, it seems like to me you're concerned about us when you get in there, Jack, and you're in up doubling it. Look at our history. We haven't done that. Uh, you know, the, we, have, we don't ever six months or every year come in and say, we're going to do this. Typically, our rents have been pretty consistent year after year after year. A couple years ago, I don't know when was that, we did raise the rent. Raised it twice in 18 years. Okay, rent's been raised twice in 18 years. $50 a month. So, uh, so I, I, what I'm saying is if your concern is that we're gonna, if you get your business successful and we think you're making money, we're gonna take it away from you, we're not gonna do that. I, is, I, I, I understand what you're saying and I appreciate it. I, I'll tell you the other story of my, my farming business. I had this great contract making 20000 a month. 
and they cut me off. Put me through bankruptcy, divorce, and all that kind of stuff. About three years later, I asked these guys, why did you cut me off? And they said, well, we just didn't like your attitude. You know? I so, think we all have stories like that, but right now we're, we're okay. simply talking about to the basics of what you offered and what we have to offer there and to see if you can sell the commission on basically that you're going to be a good steward if this happened of the space and provide the necessary uh, things that we're looking for or you're looking for, the airport's looking for, Dave has it, he can tell you what people uh, want or don't want. Uh, I think you can overkill a menu in, in that situation. I think you can have too much stuff that hurts you and uh, give me a choice or two or three in a place like that and I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, now I think a lot of people are that way. Uh, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm just trying to move this forward. No, no. Steve. No. I'm... No. Uh, and I don't, I don't think we're interested in personalities. We're interested in a product. I, I know, just... and, and, and who's behind the product is not as important to us as what the public perceives. You know, uh, as long as the product is good and the public likes it, why would we care who and what's behind it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something here that kind of gives us a out as a commission. We're here to run the airport, and we're not in the restaurant business. And we're not even really, this body's not in the leasing business. If someone wants to lease a, a hangar up there, they go to James. So I'm, I'm saying, for, at least from my standpoint, I would... I would leave it to James' discretion to come back and tell us what he did or wants to do or anything like that and make the case. And then we could, as far as I know, we have space to lease up there. And I don't know just how much input we want in telling James whether he can or he can't. But he can come back and give us a good review. But that's where I would, that's where I would leave it. That's where I would leave it. I think, I think we're looking for consistency of hours and product product we want to be at consistent hours if you say you're going to be open certain hours and and if it's a consistent standard good product that you know you as an airport commission we could be proud to say yeah he serves a great hamburger go there and eat you know and not wonder is he going to be open this Saturday or is he going to close at 10 30 or whatever so the consistency of food and product and Consistency of hours would be our biggest concern. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh, we hear a motion to that effect to tell James to use his best judgment, come back and tell us what he wants to do, and we'll at the next meeting or before the next meeting. Uh, where are we at? Or did you go and issue a lease? Or I, I would move that we give James the authority to to lease and. Uh, we're going like to we're going to rework like on the hangar. Yeah, yeah. We, we're going to we've been we were talking about reworking the lease, and uh, other than the uh, what we voiced about uh, making sure that they adhere to the time, and we we I still say we don't have anything to do with the menu. Right. Oh, but I do think we need to put some teeth into it as far as your operating hours are this, whatever we well, agree yes. to. We could put that. a paragraph in there saying that if failure to follow their operating hours that they post would be a default to the lease. Yeah, we, yeah, we can just go with his proposal. It needs to be something just the same as not paying your rent. Well, I think what you could do is you could say, if the if a proposal is made it becomes an addendment to the lease if he says i'm going to open seven to ten or and i'm going to serve this uh that's that's becomes a an addendum or a functioning part of the lease wasn't well, that was well, that, that kind of what i said that we would would we'd leave it up to him to, to make the proposal on the times which he right. had right enter that as part of the lease and if he's going to change that He's got to come back before the commission and ask 
uh, a permission for that. Uh, it's not consistent with this hour. It's a default. Well, that can just be drawn up in a lease that uh, with with a specific uh, customer. But do you, as far as this document we've got before us, we would only need to amend it to say proposal would become a functioning part of the That's lease. That's why I thought we'd let James take this. Failure to comply with the proposal would be a failure to comply with the, with the the, the lessor leases. Proposal we, would be a reason for default. I know we would all like to exercise this before the next meeting, but I don't see how how we can or why, why we should. I just feel like we need to make sure. I don't think we've got enough information today to do it, other than just say if give James permission if he complies with with what he suggested, and we draw the lease up to that. We lease it to him. Do we want to lease it to him or not? Uh, has he? Has he made that? Yeah, you're talking about a whole nother 30 days. You're putting him on hold before we can approve it. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't have a bit of problem in the world trying him. You know, huh? I don't, and I don't either. So if you all want to make. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, let James Smith uh, pursue the leasing of the restaurant and in the same manner as he pursues leasing the hangers and then uh, he has the authority to do whatever is deemed necessary to lease the restaurant to whoever he feels is best i already made a motion to that effect been a long Did? time ago well, I'm sorry <laughs> i move that we give james the uh, authority to lease okay. the property and that uh, the proposal become a part of the lease all right i'll second that with I'm this sorry about that. with this particular <laughs> specific gentleman with this particular gentleman i've got some discussion before we vote on that okay. so in that proposal or motion it's it up to jane i think it should be up to us to determine the hours of operation and the days of operation and not put that on james necessarily that, well, he's already he's already proposed it. Yeah, in his seven, proposal, he's got seven times seven, hours seven seven days a week. Last page. Oh, I didn't see uh, that. Didn't see yeah, it's in there. Oh, here we go. Seven to seven, seven days a week. Yeah, but he was talking about cutting that back because he seemed over generous with. I said, if you did stay seven days, they're going to hold you to that unless you go back to the commission. So, he may change that to six days. And then just do breakfast and lunch to start to get fired up and then propose more. So I thought he said here he was just going to do breakfast and lunch and 7 p.m. would include dinner. Right. Correct. And that's what I said. Between me and him talking and him realizing that it's going to take time to build customer base back, he'll probably submit us a new proposal for just breakfast and lunch six days a week to start. I was, well, I was suggest. Ahead, can we go ahead now then and. And we could say Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. with breakfast and lunch. And then that gives him something to base it on if he wants to move forward. Yeah, or we could just go ahead and leave it like he proposed. And we've already told him if he needs to change it, he needs to come back forward. He'd come back next month. And we'd give you him change that. the authority. You can just tell him Either that way. those are the hours that are acceptable to you. And if the proposal yeah. includes those hours, he can go ahead for and then he can come back and change it next month, which. Yeah, but if we get, if we tell James what we prefer, like seven to two, give James that authority. If if it's out, you know, he can. We 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 basically establish a minimum, right? Not a maximum. No. If he wants to be open seven. He can be open seven, but he has to at least be open. At seven. least seven to two. Yeah, like seven to two, six days a week. You can do that. Still think we need in there that whatever hours we still we're still trying to get this consistency if it's advertised there we wouldn't want him to be there some days till seven o'clock at night some days till two o'clock so we need to have a specific starting in put that in the lease that's the trouble we got into and i'm good with whatever you negotiate basically 
to say a minimum of 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And if there were times where Dave calls and says, hey, I got a plane coming in here in 30 minutes. It's five minutes till two. Mm -hmm. Stick around and serve them. That would give him at least minimal. That'd be up to him to decide. I mean, okay. So we've got a. I've got the motion. lease that reads: Give James the authority to lease the restaurant property, and the gentleman's proposal to be made part of the lease. Is that how you want to work? Why don't we? Yeah, well, with, with minimum hours of seven to two. Okay. Any more discussion? It wants to be open on Sundays. He just needs to make sure he's open airs. Right. Well, and then I think the next step of that is, and if he defaults on hours or days agreed upon, the contract immediately becomes null and void. Now we got that. We're going to need the amend default that. in the default. We're going to need to amend that to reflect that suggest suggestion, please. The default says that either party can declare a default by the other party under the terms of the lease. So if that operating hours is a term of the lease and it is there, we're covered because we say in the default section. So I think we're covered. We just have to give them 10 days notice. So that's your motion? That's my motion. You want to clarify it? Because I'm confused. <laughs> read, read it to us, Rose. Okay, what I've got down is um, Greg makes a motion to give James the authority to lease the restaurant property and his proposal be made part of the lease with minimum hours of 7 to 2, Monday through Saturday. Is that your motion? That's it. You're a second? Oh, Steve's already seconded. Oh, we got, we got a second? Uh, Roll call. Willoughby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Collier? Yes. Smith? Yes. Okay. Garver's not here today. Got it written. He emailed his updates. I don't have any old business ex except. Do you want to cover what? Uh, want to go ahead uh, with this without. That's his updates. Oh, hmm. James, you want to comment on this? Yeah, the uh, state had their meeting yesterday, and they approved our grant for the concrete pad. Item number two. Yeah, okay. item number two. And uh, it's in Malvern, Arkansas, so we didn't get any notification. But we called the ADA, and they said that's fine. They'd take care of it anyway, and it went without any problems. That grant got approved through state. We're getting um, all the qu quotes for the terminal roof. We're waiting on one more quote, and you can send that off to the state as well. So, did we decide it's not worth repairing? Yeah, the, the quote to repair was over twenty thousand, versus anywhere from fifty to seventy thousand to replace. And you get. You don't have any time base on that. No one. warranty, whatever, versus 10 years with a new one. I saw some pictures. And, and a, roughly third, a third of the cost. Sure, that grant will be about 16000 And that that concrete pave you're talking about is that turn of the parking place for the heavies, the heavy jets and stuff to keep us sinking in our asphalt. asphalt. The operating account. Or if you want to take it out of the CIP money that's left over, we got some. We still got CIP money, so tune of twenty, about you know a little, a little over twenty-four thousand. Or would, it, would it be the roof, or? Well, would it be better? Got, to, we got to, matching funds to meet on that. Would it be better to take the sixteen for the uh, pad? Is that what? That's what we're talking about, isn't it, Wyman? Better to take that out of our operating and hold the CIP for the terminal because that money was specifically and that shows that we're 
using it. So if we save the CIP to put towards the terminal, which what the money was originally given us for, wouldn't that be a better utilization and, and uh, show of good faith to the city that we're using the money? Sorry, we got it for the terminal to begin with. And That's I what I'm saying. So we should use, use the that. CIP towards that and use the operating that. budget for the... Or you could argue that uh, the pad is for parking for big airplanes at the terminal building. Right. Either one, it doesn't matter to me. I just want y'all to designate where you well, want to take we're only Well, we're only looking at a... Uh, well, 15, we're looking at 15,000, yeah. 16, yeah. So I, I just, you know, I just... I, would be used I, I just think it'd be good for us to. Well, when the time comes, it'll be a while. Well, we'll, you're saying lay this money aside now. I don't know what anything else we have it earmarked for, do we? I just. I agree with you. enough cash and then checking account to cover it. I, I just want us to, to show good faith to the city that we're not asking for money for one thing and then. Right going to someplace else and spending it because they've told us we can have it. They'd understand that. Yes, I just, I think that's important. Right. I apologize for being late, but did, I heard a rumor and you guys may have already discussed it about the fire marshal setting down 12 stones for a little bit earlier in the week or last week. I hadn't heard that. Setting down what? 12 stones because of their little building inside the building. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I heard that uh, they sent code enforcement out there instead. Yeah. It was against code to have that shed inside that private hangar, Sue Thompson's hangar. They were going to shut him down or something. That's the rumor I'd heard, but I didn't I, know. I have no clue. Okay. That's been in there for... John Gearhart put it in there. A long time. Uh, you, sometimes you get change of people at the city, it changes things. Yeah. <laughs> Any other old business? Comments? If not, we'll adjourn. Mm -hmm.